Hello, everyone. Welcome to the panel Groundwater and Children. This is our first Making Groundwater Visible, an event from the Groundwater Project. And I'm your host, Everton Oliveira. Thank you so much for joining us. Please upload your picture, make a nice face, take a picture watching the event and tag it at the groundwater to be featured on our social media. We count on you. Like and share our posts. Volunteer to help translate books into your mother tongue. Make a difference. Let's make groundwater visible. We count on you. Before we start, I would like to thank our sponsor for making this event possible and free to all of you. TDS, Technical Development Solutions from Saudi Arabia. Hydroplan, a consulting company from Brazil. G360 from the University of Guelph in Canada. Solinst Equipments from Canada. And Waterloo Barrier also from Canada and also to all the individual donors. Without them, this noble endeavor would not be possible. Please join them, donate if you are an individual or add the name of your company as a sponsor to a game changer initiative. Our project mainly focused on producing books for groundwater, groundwater students and groundwater people that are interested in this topic in general is not only based on that, our aim is much broader. We intend to reach all society so everybody would know how groundwater is important. It makes up to 98% of all the liquid groundwater available for drinking purposes and for human uses in our planet. It is so important and your help is very good, right? And we have here today the experience with children why? Because children is the future. If children are aware of groundwater, people will become aware of groundwater because children influence their fathers, their parents, their, you know, the world uh, as a whole. You see, if they, they grow up with that in mind, well, the world does change. And that's the hope we have. And that's why we're putting a lot of effort to make this true. We have today here with us, Two uh, very, very kind people who, who wants to help us uh, showing their experience with children and what they can do and what they've done and what we could do learning from their experience. We have here today with us Peter Russell from Waterloo, Canada, and we have Edison Granizoli from Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I would like them to make a brief introduction, introduction about themselves. And then we'll have a, a short uh, presentation from each of them. And we go to a chat to discuss the important points that are going to be presented today. So welcome, both of you. Thank you very much for your kindness. It's a pleasure meeting you again. You're great friends, you're great people. It's, it's a pleasure. Please, Peter, first. Uh, once upon a time, I came to Canada from England in 1967. I tell people I was a centennial project. Uh, it was uh, and the, the year when uh, Canada was celebrating itself. So I arrived just in time for that. Um, eventually, though, I, I was working in the rock preparation lab and eventually turned out that I was in charge of the museum and we got lots of kids coming through the the museum and we uh, we started to um, think that maybe uh, instead of just dinosaurs and things like that we would add stuff to do with water because uh, where we live in Kitchener Waterloo is the the largest um, place in Canada that uses groundwater as its main source of water so that's why we got to this stage <laughs> Very good. Thank you. We're, we're going back to that. We're going back to that. Edson, please, please make a brief introduction about yourself. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation. My name is Edson Granzoli. I live in Brazil, specifically in, a, in, a, in, in the country, in a city named Sorocaba. 
And uh, I have been working with education since the past century, <laughs> 1996. It was the first time I, I, I started to work in a school in Brazil. And I worked as a biology and science teacher for 22 years. And during this period, I always try to develop some environmental education programs and uh, in, in the schools I, I, I used to work. And today I'm, I'm still working with environmental education and I'm the uh, ed educational director of Reconnect. It's a social enterprise here in Sao Paulo. And I'm still working as a teacher, as a, as a, a university collaborate, uh, collaboration and as an independent researcher in education. Thank you very much again for the invitation. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're very kind. So I'll start with Peter. Peter, can, uh, can you make a, uh, your presentation, please? A groundwater adventure, how Wally and Diana came to be. Um, Leanne Gelsthorpe was uh, uh, with the Waterloo Center for Groundwater Research. Uh, we, she was um, doing outreach activities and joint projects with our Biology and Sciences Museum. Uh, one of our activities was an essay contest for high school students on the subject of groundwater. The notice about the contest was sent to our What on Earth? Uh, Earth Sciences newsletter mailing list. Since the WCGR was an Ontario Centre of Excellence, uh, the contest was for Ontario students. Somehow, somebody uh, passed an announcement to a school in Youngstown, Alberta. And uh, that a student there entered the contest and uh, they did a really good job and described a variety of pol uh, groundwater pollution sources which contaminated groundwater. Um, we gave her a special award and uh, uh, which was presented to Diana Armstrong. And the name of the water droplet in the story in English is Diana after her. We didn't follow on and just uh, talk about uh, groundwater pollution because we didn't want to, want to touch that with the kids. So we, we just focused on the good things about water. So we, we put together a story and uh, we, had, we decided we would get artwork made up uh, about this story about groundwater. And we got, uh, we, we got the pictures, as you see here, we tried to focus on the names that scientists would use for talking about groundwater like aquifer, aquitard, percolate, saturated zone and evaporate. And uh, since, do, since kids can uh, learn dinosaur names, we thought that they could uh, learn these names too. So uh, we, we decided to have Wally the worm and Deanna the water droplet. Diana was a knowledgeable teacher and Wally was the inquisitive pupil. The artwork to illustrate uh, the story uh, was by Fortunado Ristanio. He's our illustrator cartoonist. And um, he enjoyed giving us a variety of water drops to choose from so that each water droplet had its own personality. Uh, the story was presented using a slide projector uh, to a group of um, well drillers uh, in the Ontario Groundwater Association. That was the first group that we gave our presentation to. And uh, after that, uh, we gave events at schools 
environmental events and for children's groups such as girl guides and cubs. And we included a demonstration of groundwater flow model, water taste test of local tap water, distilled spring and perio water. See whether, whether the kids liked it or not. And while we were doing that, we tried to find out what water they used. Did their parents drag a bottle home every week or did they just get it out of the tap? After a while, we started to receive requests to have the story in book form. The story was written using the scientific names, as I said. We also produced um, other books as well as Wally Indiana's Groundwater Adventure, we did one on black flies to blueberries, which is a wetland book, and one on quartz crystals. In 1994, uh, we decided that we would make Deanna and Wally into mascots. So here's Deanna running around. The problem with wearing this outfit was it was hot in the summer around here, uh, like 30 degrees and you're standing around in this thing. And then the kids are used to seeing these kind of mascot looking creatures on TV. Uh, so they go and whack them on their backside and things like that. So uh, they, they thought there were things that you would actually fight. So we, we did the books, then we got around to, to um, making some songs. Uh, we worked with Chris Rawlings, a honey baritone folk singer from Toronto. He collaborated with us to produce songs for groundwater festivals and earth sciences topics to tell the story about groundwater. The songs entitled Groundwater, Wetland, Wonderland, and Living on a Layer Cake. The songs are available from chrisrawlings.ca. Mariposa in the schools helped us to produce this and uh, Science Canada uh, and uh, G Canadian Geological Foundation. I'm going to sing you a little bit of a song. So are you ready? We're all living on a layer cake way down under the ground. Living on a layer cake, take a slice and look around. There's an angel cake layer of pumice rock tells about a volcano and a marzipan strip up on top where the earth's food supply does grow. Sand and silt form a sponge cake where the groundwater lies and the city stand tall like candles when you realize that we're all living on a layer cake way down under the ground. Living on a layer cake, take a slice and look around. And then we had the other one. You've got to dig down underground to the saturated zone. You can't swim, but you can ooze around in the saturated zone. You won't find fish, you won't find turtles, you won't find frogs or snails, but you'll find lots of rocks and gravel and groundwater for your pails, cause there is groundwater in the saturated zone. Because there's ground water in the saturated zone. There you go. So Very after nice. that, we, we wanted to do other things. So we got together and Leanne Appleby and Peter Gray went to Nebraska to see how they, ha they produced the ne Nebraska Groundwater Festival for children there. Each year, uh, for about 30 years, uh, they have had a one day program where 900 grade five pupils come from around Nebraska. They all come together and uh, do different activities. So we, we looked at that and then we started to do our own groundwater festival. An uh, inter interested group of people met to arrange a week long festival and it was held at the Ontario Agricultural Museum in Milton near Toronto. The, the, the event catered to 1,000 children a day uh, and they, were, they came from all over southern Ontario. Uh, the funding for this was arranged by donations and we had lots of volunteers. The second uh, 
Groundwater Festival after that was held in uh, Waterloo, Kitchen Waterloo at the Dune Heritage Crossroads Museum, which is now called the Ken Sealing Museum. And this year would be its 25th anniversary of this activity. So they've been through about 40,000 kids so far. Uh, the Children's Water Education Council. Oh, here we have some recharge going on. Uh, you must have, the, we couldn't always organize it so that every day they had some recharge, but they did get some occasionally. Uh, so um, the Children's Water Education Council got together and they uh, made available information and materials to different uh, places around the province. And through all those different, uh, uh, different festivals, 200,000 kids have now been uh, interested, uh, taken an interest in water. Here is a, a t-shirt that, that we used to give our, um, our volunteers a t-shirt every year. So each year had a different color. Here are some of the activities like filling up a pail of water and running over and putting it in the bath to see how many buckets of water you'd have to drag in to have a once a week bath. And then they, they have uh, water being pumped from the stream and uh, sent along all those groups of children to be poured back in to the water. Different activities. Um, we had about 30 or 40 different activities for the children. This is the last uh, groundwater festival we had last year and we all the people who were involved got a nice blue shirt like I have. Um, the, this guy at the side, he was um, uh, uh, working at the children's, uh, sorry, at the museum and every day he had to uh, give he had to read the book five times for a, a group in the amphitheater at the, at the museum. Uh, people who wish to start their own groundwater festival in Ontario use the Children's Water Education Council uh, to give them a hand. The end. Thank oh, you. Fun. Hey, uh, hi, Edson. Why don't you give him a, an applause, please, your, your sound. It, it was lovely. Thank you very much. That was very good. That was <laughs> <Yes>. very nice. <laughs> I loved it. Loved it. Well, he, he raised the bar so high. Now you have to, to dance, Edson. Uh oh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm very concerned, but there, there are several uh, common points. <laughs> uh, regarding my presentation and Professor Peter's presentation. Con congratulations, okay. Professor, for your work. Thank, thank you very much, Peter. That was great. So for those who don't know, uh, we mentioned Peter uh, in, a, in one of our sessions when we were talking about the Prison Cherry book, 1979, Prison Cherry Groundwater book. And here's the man who, who, who's responsible for the drawings. And for the upside down, you know, the one that turned out. Yeah, I was surprised uh, that they put it upside, upside down. down in, the, in the cover. Here's the <laughs> for the original. <laughs> Thank you. That we're goes back to the 70s, that does. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're, we're coming back to that later. So now <laughs> we'll have Edson's Grand Design presentation. Please, Edson, your turn. Thank, Thank you very Peter. much. Uh, I'll share my screen now. Well, thank you very much again, and uh, I would like to talk uh, more, 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 more like a framework related to water, to the water and education nexus. I would like to to present firstly this map uh, published in the New York Times in two thousand and sixteen, uh, and so this map is already four years old. Uh, but in 2016, we already, ha already had uh, several uh, 
countries and territories and uh, in the earth that was uh, exper experiencing water sca scarcity for at least one month during, during the year. So this is a very, very, very concerning picture related to water scar scarcity in our planet. And you can, you can see that there are some points with more than 10 months of water scarcity. So this is very concerning. Uh, I, I'm here in this uh, reddish orange uh, dot here in Brazil. Uh, and uh, this, this southern region in Brazil is facing since 2013, 2014, uh, several, uh, several episodes of water scarcity. So this is a very concerning picture, not only for, uh, for Brazil, uh, but uh, as well as the whole planet. So we have uh, around 2.2 to 2.5 billion people uh, that lack uh, access to water, to water, to quality water. And by 2025, uh, I'm sorry, 2025, two thirds of the world's population may be facing water shortages. So this is, a, again, this is a very concerning, uh, concerning panorama. Uh, and why? Why we are uh, increasingly experiencing water scarcity? There are several different reasons and depends on your country, your region, but uh, the growth of urbanization and the population growth it, itself uh, uh, are both uh, reasons that collaborate to water scarcity. We have, of course, water misuse, we have transport, the transport of water, the, the transport of, of water by pipes. We have se several uh, liters of water that uh, are being lost every day. In Brazil, uh, we have around 30 to 35 percent of transport losses uh, related to pipe to pipe leak, and we have, of course, uh, changes in the rain in the rain regime. Uh, and most of these changes are related to the climate crisis we are experiencing, uh, not, not only these days, but, but, uh, but during the past de de decades. And what education has to do with this problem? Well, well we have to think uh, what, citizen, uh, what kind of citizen we would like to form to, uh, to, to tackle this problem of water uh, scarcity. So we, we, we would like, we need to form a citizen that deal with, uh, deal uh, really well with the uncertainties that have more critical and systemic worldview and the education uh, has to do a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, with that. We have to develop citizenship. We have to develop, we, we have to form an individual that face water related problems as a social challenge, not only as an environmental, environmental challenge. And we have to stimulate uh, people uh, to create opportunities, opportunities for participation, for co-creation of, of solutions and co-responsibility. And how to do that, it, it's not a, how can I say, it's not a, a magic formula, but uh, I have been working, uh, especially with kids and young, with hands-on projects using active, active learning methodologies, especially PBL, it's problem-based uh, problem -based learning. This kind of uh, educational approach uh, intends to uh, stimulate the reconnection with nature. We have to reconnect with nature, understand that we depend of, depend, uh, depend of nature in, in all our activities. We explore, uh, we, uh, do, uh, using PBL, you stimulate P, the, the students to explore their reality, their, their context. And the presentation of Peter was perfect because 
he, de he deals all the time with narratives, né? with fun narratives re uh, related to groundwater. So the students have to build a narrative, not only deal with numbers, with, co with information, with co the cognitive process in the school, but they have to understand their context. They have to build their own narrative. They have to look and involve in, in, and involve in, this, pro in this process content and action partners. And of course, uh, they have to use the creativity to build their own local or regional solutions. And after all this, uh, these steps, the, it's fundamental, it's very important to communicate the findings of this educational pro process. So this, again, this is not a magic formula, but a framework to think uh, how to, to, to work, not only with water, but also as, as well, as uh, groundwater, but only uh, topics like energy, like uh, trash, uh, all these uh, th these matters, these social and environmental problems, can be can be tackled very well by problem uh, problem based learning. So, guys, that's it. Uh, I would like to share my contacts, uh, and if you want to reach me, please write to Edson at reconnecta.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edson. Thank you very much. We expected you to dance after he, he, he sang his songs. That was so, so uh, good. That, that, that would be very disappointing, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, give it a try. We, we, we may have some laughy situations here. Not, not too bad. Kids would love it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you guys. I've seen uh, Edson mention hands-on approach and so did Peter. Peter showed us some very interesting situations with hands-on approach. Well, I would like you to, 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 to discuss with us a little bit about that. When we have uh, an important situation with this pandemic today, why? Because uh, gathering kids for fun. It's not possible this year. And we're learning from that. And for us on the Groundwater Project, uh, it's quite an interesting situation because we are an internet-based uh, endeavor. We started trying to distribute knowledge through the internet to, in, to interconnect people that has you know, the same good intentions about taking care of water and groundwater in special all over the world. And the only way for us to go is through the internet. And you have some experience doing that, doing you know, presential events. And what, what would you have to say about using the internet on your long years of experience, please? Peter, you may go first if you wish. Uh, yeah, we're, we're having this difficulty um, putting things that used to be tactile and putting them on to the computer, which is kind of hard. But people, families are looking for stuff like this on our museum website. Uh, so uh, Karina, our museum curator, she is busy working on project, taking the, uh, the hands-on things that we had, uh, if you toured the, muse uh, the outdoor museum when we had a one, one a year, one week a year of activities and trying to put them together so that they can make sort of games and things like that out of them. It has to be interesting, uh, not just somebody reading something to them. They have to have to have some activities. And of course, the teachers are looking for this sort of stuff now. So. Good. You, Edson, please. Uh, well, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big challenge. And uh, I agree that uh, gamification, it's a very good way to work with kids uh, during all this period. We, we are all working online. Uh, I, I had some uh, good experiences with, with the kids. I have, uh, have prepared some uh, classes about uh, water and climate change 
and uh, the pandemics itself. And during these presentations, it is possible to use all these apps, these new apps, uh, to stimulate the kids to work together, even they, they, they are in their own homes. So we have the technology for that. And the kids like to, to work with, with each other online. It's absolutely not the same thing that uh, you are in a classroom, uh, working together, thinking together, creating together. But I, 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 think that, I think teachers in Brazil are making their best in this situation. So there are ways and I hope, and I think uh, we all hope that this situation uh, finishes, uh, finishes as soon as possible. <laughs> Well, uh, Peter, let me ask you one question because, well, you, you, you might have your book translated into so many languages, the Wally Indiana's book, right? Because, well, oh, yeah, Mandarin just showed up right here. So, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, by, Mandarin. By, the, by, the, by the way, when Peter mentioned the museum, because he's so comfortable with that, he, he, he's talking about the Earth Sciences Museum at the University of Waterloo, for those who don't know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you'd like me to talk a little about it? Well, um, yeah. Sure. Uh, in that 1967, when I showed up at the university, um, the biology and earth sciences um, departments at the university uh, decided that they they wanted to do a centennial project, which was produce a museum, which we did. We had uh, stuffed animals and things like that and uh, rock dis rocks and mineral displays and, and, and we ended up getting dinosaurs and things like that. And then um, with the water, uh, uh, WCGR, Waterloo Center for Groundwater Research, uh, they helped us fund uh, touch uh, things like um, you take all the water you use in a day in two liter water bottles and you put them into a big display and then you have buttons to press saying how much you use to flush the toilet or to have a shower. And in fact, the, the, the one we made in the 80s, we just recently reworked it because we don't use as much water as we did in those days. So uh, you put press buttons that show you what it was like in the in those days and nowadays we press buttons and there's less water used so that's kind of fun so yeah. uh, so along with that uh, there are other activities which you can then take to schools and out outside and you can have a water a water race pouring water through sand or gravel or clay and it doesn't go anywhere through the clay anyway the kids have to find that out but that's all tactile stuff. And right now, without you explain how to do it and they make them at home out of stuff that they have in the garden and that kind of thing, they could do that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Edson, Edson, about the, the, the tactile experience that he mentions, is it, uh, and I know that you, you, you are a great content production for, for kids, Right? Is it possible no. for us to 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 to, to have that uh, add some to, to prepare, let's say, some experiments that kids could run with their parents at home? Something. Do you have that experience? What do you What do you think? Yeah, we should be able to do um, do that. Uh, one thing that we used to do um, with the with the groundwater festival during the week uh, the the kids would uh, go around looking at, uh, looking for a question and answering the question on a sheet. And then they put it in. And then at, at the end of that, uh, we would go to the school and we would make them, uh, we'd, we'd talk about an edible aquifer. So you make it out of ice, crushed ice, ice cream and things like that. And you suck it all up and that's it. <laughs> you're, you're, but it, you explain as you're doing it. But, so maybe we can find the formula for that and put it online. How, how you make an edible aquifer. <laughs> and Edson, 
no, Edson, uh, what about your experience with that, about writing uh, and preparing those uh, experiments? Yeah, yeah, we have not by, uh, by Reconnecta uh, preparing some uh, pedagogy trails, let's say, uh, using the themes uh, as water, as uh, energy. And yes, it, it's possible using your everyday, uh, uh, everyday instruments and elements in your house to make some, uh, some, some simple uh, uh, types of experiments. But it, it's very important to stress that we have, uh, we have a very uh, particular, not only Brazil, but a, a very particular situation related to inequality. We have some students in the, in the, better, in the best schools in Brazil. They have all the, the, the equipments, the internet, the apps, and, uh, and the possibility to develop uh, these experiments as well as, well as, as, well as uh, the classes at home. But we have uh, lots of students, especially from, from public schools that have several uh, difficulties and impediments uh, related to the use of technology to a quality internet. So we, we, it's very important we also uh, stress this point related to inequality in Brazil. Okay, but um, I'm, my question is, w w would it be possible for us, the Groundwater Project, to have, some, let's say, some guidelines for experiments? Because we're, we're going to talk to, to some professors, and to, not only to professors, but to, 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 to people that are interested in groundwater, and they could be teaching kids, for example, mm -hmm. teaching children. Would it be able for us to pass along some uh, nice experiments that they could reproduce even in, in poor places like Africa or you know, South America, Asia, places that, that have you know, bad access to internet, but some you know, mm -hmm. people on the pyramid might get the information and go down from that. What do you guys think about that, Edson, first? Yeah, I think it's possible. I think uh, the, this, uh, this event is very, very core uh, to join some people, some people that work with creativity, such as Peter here with us today, and think about these experiments. And, uh, this, and this is a very important uh, element you brought now, uh, that we must have some of these guys forming all the rest of the, the pyramid. So we have some researchers and teachers and university professors that form uh, school teachers, not only school teachers, but all the educators that work in formal, informal and non-formal education. So we, we, I'm pretty sure we have this, the, the, all, all, the, all the creativity, all the possibilities uh, to think, to think, and to do here uh, in the groundwater project. Very good. We're going to talk about that. Peter, sure. please. Yeah, I'm sure that um, since they're working on it right now with our own groundwater festival, that stuff should be available. So uh, a lot of, and of course, with the with the uh, people working locally. Um, the Karina, uh, the, the museum curator at the moment, her husband works on outdoor education. So uh, he has quite a few ideas about that kind of stuff uh, because he works in a wetland environment and that kind of thing. So, and uh, around here, you can walk and have a look at these things, but then you're in a desert or something or Flint, Michigan, where they have iron, uh, lead in the water and the stuff like that, you know, they have to understand what's going on. And then, of course, even schools some around here, they've had uh, lead pipe, lead, in the, lead solder holding the two pieces of copper pipe together, and that leaches into the water. So they have to understand. Maybe they don't. Maybe, I mean, it gets a bit complicated, but if we're talking about from kindergarten all the way through to high school, then a lot of this stuff should be available, yes. 
It's very good. It's very good. So you guys have uh, any suggestions on how we can we can get you know can prepare some material for people on, on the groundwater projects and suggestions that come to mind? Have you thought about that? Well, I can talk to uh, uh, Karina about it. Uh, also, the CWEC, Canadian Water Education Council, they have materials that they make available. So it, I think you, you'd talk to them because they, 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 uh, and they're encouraging other people to do the same thing, right? Here's a book how to, how to run a, a display. And then you, of course, pick out the ones you want for different communities. Because I know it, if you're talking where we live and then you go to the American Southwest where it, uh, the Navajo live and things like that, uh, they're in a desert environment, but two minutes later it rains like heck and it turns into mud. And probably, you know, you have such a lot of different ideas. And then uh, what used to be pure clean water after we've mined coal nearby doesn't end up being pure clean water anymore. So, anymore, yeah. <laughs> so it depends what, what you're trying to sell. You, Edson. Um, I, I would like to, to face this challenge. Uh, I would like to bring this idea to my team in Reconecta and maybe join Peter some other opportunity to talk about all his, his and your experience around groundwater. I'm sure I have a lot to learn too. Okay, that's sounds good. good. That's very good. Well, I was I just came to, to my mind here now that, that uh, we, could have a, uh, we could have a book from you, we can get some guys from Africa as well, see if we can have a book with a few experiments for children. We will be able to release that in English and we could translate into several languages because then we will have this uh, crowdsourcing people all over the world that are already translating things for us. That would be a nice experiment. If, you, if you're willing to, to give it a try, uh, I'll be very glad to, to intermediate that if you want, if you wish. Sure, well, let, let's do something like that. Get started, you got to start somewhere. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm a great boss. I can boss you around all the time. I can push you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't say yes, don't say yes. <laughs> I my mouth. Right. Well, that's it, okay. <laughs> well, but it's important because, you know, teaching the children then helps the parents know about it because they'll say why are you running the tap all the time when you clean your teeth because really you should only just be uh, putting a bit in the glass rather than letting your wife know that you're using enough water to go over Niagara Falls to do the same job. <laughs> <laughs> true. It is. Uh, what do you think Edson? Is it, that's true right? Yeah. I, I'm sorry? No, well, that's true that the kids, they, they, they teach their parents, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, a, this is a very important part of the education process. You must, uh, you must make the children take the message home. So we, we have some, uh, uh, we, we, have, we have developed some, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, some strategies for that. For, for example, in the case of water use, we developed a contract. And in this contract, we have several different items uh, that the parents must check and they have to, to do what is written. So uh, I will try to have a five minutes bath. I will close the tap during, uh, the, the, during brushing my feet. I will, what else? I will not wash my car every weekend. And, and, oh, just and, washing the driveway, not the car. They, yeah, they perfect. Wash the drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yes. And, and, and the parents and, and the parents receive this contract, and they check some of their their responsibilities in that contract. They sign and they and they put on the fridge, so they see the, oh, the okay. promises every day. Sounds and good. The, and this is a, it, it's just a fun 
a, a, a fun way to, 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 take for, to take good message from school to home. That's very good to teach responsibility. This is this quite yeah. interesting. It's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I see we can we can get you know you, you have so many nice experience that we can share with people. It, it would be interesting. And like I said, if we if we had a, a simple book for kids, or actually for for teachers to to take to kids so they can use the experience for groundwater. My idea is that. Since we have a, a, a long reach now with the groundwater project, maybe we can get authors from different regions of the world and put together a simple book and we can deliver. If, if, you, if you're willing, I'll, I'll, I'll look for that. That's quite interesting. Well, we expect to have about an hour of conversation. It's going so fast, it's so nice. <laughs> so, so lots of fun, lots of fun. So I would like you to, 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 to make a final statement for us, please. Let us know what you expect from the groundwater project and what do you think we can, we can do to make it better. And if you have suggestions, please make sure you tell us. We'll be glad to follow whatever you, you have to say, please. Peter, thank you. And by the way, back, back again. About, about the, 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 the drawings on the, on the freezing cherry. Because you're part of the, the, the start of this whole project. Oh, that was you, amazing that it, you know, it's been such a long time and that book has been used. For, and now there's all these new chapters showing up online. Exactly. It's amazing that it's gone from that to this. But it was very expensive, that book, in those days. Now you can get it for free. Yeah, very expensive. Right. I, I, I hope, I hope you, you've got some money from that. You became rich from the book. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> it was fun, though. Okay, so please, make your final statement and, and, and what we have to do or what do you expect from the Groundwater Project, please. Well, we need to uh, look at the globe and see what kind of problems people have or good things about their water supplies, bad things about the water supplies. Um, neat things happen in, this, in hot climates rather than cold climates. Like when you go to the Southwest US, the groundwater evaporate, uh, water comes from underneath the ground through the rocks and it, uh, it um, deposits lime right there. And, it's called caliche, and it, it then evaporates into the atmosphere and you get this white layer in the desert. And that's because the water's trying to get out and up into the atmosphere. So that, that's kind of neat, uh, but it's explaining it to the people who live there and maybe to people who don't, what happens, right? Yeah, we have to pick a few things. Uh, if you live in a te temperate environment like what, uh, Kitchener Waterloo, Guelph from uh, southern Ontario, what happens here? Uh, what they're trying to do to uh, in in our area, I looked in the newspaper today that they're the old idea when I first came to Canada was they take that stream and they put it into a concrete tube and they take it through the area. So you never see that, that uh, stream again. And now they're digging all that stuff up and making it so the stream is there again. And it's making a lot of difference to the environment because, uh, yeah. So that's, that's one thing just this week that the, they're working on. So it's explaining that. And then uh, yeah, our area, we have lots of snow. So we use salt on the ground. But not only do we use salt on the ground, we use salt uh, in our water softeners to make nice soft water to have a, a shower and things like that. What happens to the salt water from your, uh, the, the recharging your water softener? It goes down river to other people to drink that stuff. So, uh, we have to everything everything has a you know you start off with one thing and then we we can degrade the the water if we're not careful so we have to work with local communities and stuff like that and and see what's in the water because we all have a coffee 
and the where do you think the caffeine goes down the river so things <laughs> like that <laughs> thank you peter edson please uh I think we have a huge challenge that is the, the, climate, the climate crisis. I think it would be very important for us educators uh, to, to always try to connect water, the water cycle, and of course the groundwater uh, to the climate crisis. How the water and the groundwater uh, what are the, rela the relationship between these two factors, water and climate crisis? How climate crisis is, uh, is, uh, is changing the water dynamics in the planet? And of course, if the dy dy dynamics is changing the planet, uh, the dy dynamics is changing for us too. So it's very important trying all the time to connect different social and environmental challenges to the climate crisis. I think that's my message. <laughs> Thank you very much, both of you. It was, it was great fun having both of you here. Uh, and I learned a lot. And I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll get back to you for more uh, advice. We're going to, to go way, way far from here into educating children and I'm pretty sure we will need your help in the future. We'll put you in contact with more people if you're willing to help us. It was very nice. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for, for helping the groundwater and helping our community. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Now we're live to answer some of your questions, please. Uh, we're very glad to see that we have so many people from all over the world watching us. Very nice. Tell your friends. We, we had a wonderful session with Edson and Peter here today. And they're here to, to answer your questions. So I'll, I'll start with some of the, the, the points here that you mentioned. Fatumata Kabore from, uh, I think she's from, I don't know. Let me take a look where Fatumata is. She speaks French. Just a second, guys. I have to, I'm, I'm a bit slow here. Let me see. Okay, so she says, J'aimerais bien, bien la voir si possible pour traduire dans ma langue. Fatoumata, c'est très difficile pour, pour nous d'avoir un français et un espagnol, mais on, on est en train d'essayer ça, oui. Si vous voulez, si vous parlez bien l'anglais, et si tu veux, ou si tu, 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 tu avais des amis qui peuvent qui peut aider à, tra à traduire dans le YouTube, ça serait très bienvenu pour nous, parce que nous n'avons nous, nous pas beaucoup de personnes pour, pour faire la traduction, oui Merci pour participer. Uh, okay, guys, I was trying to, to do some French, you know. <laughs> it, was nice. it was nice, very good. <laughs> well, well I, I, don't, I don't speak French at all, so for me, it's perfect. <laughs> Let's see what Fatumata says. Okay, so we have, we have one guy here send you a message, Peter. Yes. Peter Russell, you're making a great contribution to the future of groundwater awareness. Love your songs. Do you oh, have a good. word to, to Andy? <laughs> well, very good. Um, we need to spread them out, so we need to get them from uh, uh, get them onto the website probably in the future. So we start with these songs, but other people can make them different songs in their language uh, that their children would, uh, that would appeal to their children. Yes. That's very good. So Fatumata mentions she was, she wants just the translation for, for the song. Well, all I would suggest, uh, we could post the, the lyrics and people can work that out. What do you think, Peter? We'll try and do that. Yes. Would you, would you sing in other languages as well? 
uh, I can I can sing along, yeah, do that kind of thing. We'll have to get somebody who can who can sing along in the language that we try to ch change it to. I know oh that uh, I know that uh, the original uh, uh, musician uh, he is still a able to do it in French as well, so we can do it in English and French without too much difficulty. Uh, but other languages, we'll have to get some help. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Hey guys, uh, just I, I, uh, I'd like to, to, to pose you a question that we were talking during, during our, our previous session. Is uh, how, I know you, you, you have experience on that, but have, have you thought us of something? Because we talked that, that was a recording session, and then you come back today. And, you know, those things sit on the back of our mind, and, you know, our brains are always cooking <laughs> things without <laughs> us knowing. Have you come up with some idea on how we could use or how we could use your experience to, to bring to the groundwater project? When you because you have experience, uh, usually it's a it's a physical experience. People, you know, children around. For us to do something that could reach people using the internet, children, it's not easy. I know, but maybe you came up with something uh, during this time. Well, yes. Yeah, the right now the schools in uh, Ontario are having to uh, uh, because of COVID, they're having to. Uh, work online and some of the teachers are coming up with interesting things that way uh, to do with groundwater and other natural things so it would be fun to see if they have uh, suggestions that we could use you Edson uh, well Everton uh, during the, the past year during the, the the start of the pandemic it's me and my team at Reconnecta we created three uh, classes, three different classes uh, involving uh, environmental education, involving climate change, and the other one, the pandemics itself. So they are top high uh, themes uh, now for the schools and, and, for the, and for the students. So we could uh, think to, we could think to, to prepare some class, some classes, or 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 or, 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 a, or a class involving some basics of uh, of groundwater. It would be a very interesting experience for the students and for teachers in Brazil. Good, good. Thank you. I have a question from uh, Julia Costa here in Brazil. Do you think the new social media platforms will make it easier to reach children and spread groundwater education to them? Yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, we're getting them used to using this system. To uh, right now, uh, children are getting very handy at being able to interact with the internet, and they're learning that way. So yes, we can we can spread the message that way. Uh, spreading it to the children, we spread it to the adults who are trying to keep track of what they're doing at the same time. So, yes. Excellent. Well, of course, uh, social media is already the main, uh, the main uh, via, uh, communication vehicle in the world. So uh, the, the, only, the only concern with social media is to, is to choose the right thing to, to, to watch. <laughs> The, the the pages and the channels on the on YouTube that have real good and scientific information about different subjects. So I think the the major concern involving the, the, the kids and the youth is to really be selective of what to see and what not to see. I totally agree. I totally agree. It's it's a it's a scary place for kids, right? depending on what they see. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, I agree. But is it, is, are there ways to, to select things that, like you can, uh, uh, that you can separate? So like TV channels that you don't allow children to watch? 
Is there, are there ways on the social media as well? I'd say that you know. Yes, uh, there are some uh, some filters that you can uh, select what you, your kids or or your friends or your parents. <laughs> Either way, they, <laughs> they 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 can watch or they cannot watch. Uh, there are some some filters. They are not perfect, but they they they, they do the job. They they make the job. <laughs> Very good. Oh, we, we have a question here from Angita August Agustin. And Angita Agustin, I don't know where, where are you from, Angita. Could you tell us how to keep the spirit of educating people or children about groundwater? Because sometimes when people just are, are just less interested in it, and it makes us a, a feel a bit blue about teaching them. How to keep up? To keep that up. You have to avoid. Uh... Uh, two bigger problems for the younger kids. You have to make make it more, make it interesting, but don't don't get them involved with too many difficult things that the adults should be looking after. You, Edson. Uh, I think uh, we we must avoid all the time uh, to to work with environmental education, for example from a catastrophic point of view. So the world is ending, the climate changing, it is burning everything, the forest. We, we always, we must focus on the part that we, how we can act every day for, and to, for, for the environment and to everybody. So I think we, we always must uh, keep, uh, keep ourselves optimistic about environmental problems. And I totally agree with uh, Dr. Russell uh, about the, the wicked. The, 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 the recent literature is dealing with these complex problems as wicked problems. So we should avoid the wicked problems with the kids to, to, to work, of course, with the wicked problems such as climate change. Uh, with the, the teenagers, for example, They're always focusing on what we can do every day for the environment. That's good, yes. And even just simple things like, do we really need, does, is our water good enough out of the tap? Or do we really have to buy a bottle that has been brought? I went one, one day, one, one trip with some students from Ontario. I went from Waterloo, Ontario, all the way down to Carlsbad Cabins uh, in, uh, in the US. And guess what? The water down there was from Aberfoyle Springs, right next door to where I live. And it had been driven all the way down there. It's still only H2O. And yet it's taken all over the world. I always cringe when I see Fiji water. What the heck are we doing wasting our energy taking the stuff from Fiji all the way to here. So the people could look at where they're getting their stuff. Are they spending a lot of money on that, bringing it to where they are? So it's a bit of an ax to grind, but they have to start somewhere. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Edson has, Edson has a lot, a lot of experience on teaching like that. I have, I have uh, some experience on, on that as well. We have a, a character is called Professor Agua, which is Professor Water in English. Professor Agua, and we, uh, and I answer questions to, to, to children. So the, the thing is that children send questions through on Instagram to the Professor Agua, and the good thing is that uh, you have already something that at their level, because they're, they're asking something. So some fun questions like, why don't we have uh, small fishes coming on our, on our tap when you open them? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <That was> quite... <laughs> because, you know, it's something about the, the water is clean, right? When you have clean water, fishes... The neat thing about live. that, tip in our area, uh, down where the water comes from the river, they have a little a little box where the water goes through and it's got fishes in it. If the fishes don't like the water, then we switch it off because they're the, they're the testing thing that tells us whether the water is good or not. If it isn't, you have to shut the thing off and find out what's going on. 
So the fish are really important. Yeah, so that's probably the, that's what they think. Well, you know, if fish they they survive in clean water, why not they come on on our tap? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the fishes are so that this is a, this is a way to go because so we have the, the children already participating. And one good thing is I think the drive for that that we found on this project is that they love to see them themselves, you know, on the internet. So when you post their videos, you know, with an answer, they're so happy. They show all the, you know, their friends, you know, and the people, they pay attention to, to what's going on. What's the, so they want to ask questions as, uh, as well. That's quite interesting. Everton, there, there is a wonderful challenge, uh, challenge here. We, we should to translate Professor Water to English. It would be very interesting to listen from the uh, to, to listen questions from kids from other countries. It would be very oh, yes, interesting. Yes. Well, one of the things that people that are listening to us and not only we produced I produced some videos in English and Spanish as well. But the 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 difficult part for because you know for for us that we're Portuguese speaking as a uh, as our mother tongue, right? We can we can make the language very local to, to children. You know, to, we can get the, the, the language to the level of the children because we have people that speak uh, to children, like Edson works with, with children. So we need that. And, and usually it's someone that is not a hydrogeologist. It's someone that works with kids because he knows how to talk to, to, to children, to, to translate. So this technically is called localization. We have to localize the language for specific people. So this is something we could we could try to develop on the groundwater project because that's that's going to be very important. Otherwise we, we, we won't reach because we won't have the, the proper the proper level of language to reach these people. But your your idea is very good. And yeah, I uh, but... to translate that into English and Spanish. The, this is a very, very specific and important part of scientific communication. You have to respect the language and the, the context. Without the language, the, the, the keywords and the, and the context, the message is not... Uh, 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 don't, don't go to the, to the public at all. Uh, yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, well, we, we have that. First, we're starting with translating the books, you know, for hydrogeologists. That's the first step. And then because we can tap on those sources that we have, we have hydrogeologists all over the world, as we see here today. We have people from so many countries. So they are, uh, they are already participating and helping translating that. But then when we train, this, this is when we're talking about the technical language. But then we have to change the, 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 the you know, the, the speech for, for different ages from different people that are not hydrogeologists. Then we need people that are outside our hydrogeology community. And that's another step that we're taking already, but it takes a while because it's a, you know, we have to develop this, this volunteers to, to work with us. But, but it, it's coming along, it's coming along. Very good. It's quite and you guys that are watching us, if you have suggestions, please, and spread this to, to your friends, you know, and, and some of the people, I, I, I told you already, we had the good experience, two experience that taught us uh, was, a, I mentioned already, the lady, uh, the lady from Greece, she invited a, a friend, that does a, 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 she, she teaches children. So they localized the language for, for, uh, for Greek children. And we had also uh, uh, for, in Chinese, it's a, a lady that works with Corina and uh, 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 our science museum. She had her daughter to help. Her daughter speaks Chinese and she is a perfect you know, example on how to localize a language to a children because she, she knows that. So we, we, we're learning as we go. This is an experiment where we hydrogeologists, we're learning from, from the others. That's the, 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 the beautiful thing of working on the internet. So I have, I have, uh, I have some other questions here. Uh, Luis Hernandez from Colombia. 
Uh, in Colombia, for example, although schools have a subject about, about natural science and environmental education, there is no guides for this subject. So they say, what do you think is the best way to teach, uh, uh, to teach groundwater to children? That's exactly what we're talking about. So what would you say? This is not an easy answer, right? <laughs> well, you have to start with learning what's around their surroundings. They have to know, they have to ask mom and dad, where's the water come from? Does it come from that? When we go down to the village square and we pump the water out of the ground, that's groundwater, is it? Yeah, so you have to you have to understand the local area and where they get the water from, and is it good or not? Yeah, but that's a local thing. We have to give them the tools that they can use to ask those questions of the children and then explain how the water gets down there into the ground in their environment. You know, they have the melts in the mountains, rushes down the 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 rivers uh, through the community. Some of it goes down underground and does the same thing. Um, they can they can explain that to us. So when you probably you start the subject for where does your water come from, and where does it go to? When I've finished with it, what happens to it? Does it interfere with somebody else downstream, or is it okay? Just ask a few simple questions, starting with, where does the water come from that I'm drinking right now? Edson. Well, there, there is no magic formula. <laughs> there is no one way to work uh, with environmental education, especially uh, dealing with a, a so complex and uh, wonderful theme as water or groundwater. Uh, I, I think there are some key points. I, I, I think in the school or in a community, you should listen first and talk after that. Listen to your students, listen to their questions, listen to their, uh, to their concerns about water, and start with, uh, with a dialogue with your students. Listen to them, listen to their concerns. Uh, use wonderful questions, as Dr. Russell just, just said, good and, uh, and uh, provocative questions. So uh, when everybody participates in an educational movement, they feel empowered and they want to walk with you through the problems they have in the community, looking for some kind of solutions or some kinds of ways to understand to better understand their problems. So I think the key, one of the keys of the environmental education is to promote participation and listen first, talk after that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's very, very, very good, very good advice. I, I truly, I truly believe that, truly believe that. It's a, well, and, and it, it works, it works because children have lots to say, right? When you, when you pay attention to their inquisitive minds, you know, they're putting things together, you, you learn a lot and you learn to think on how to, to, to improve their, you know, their questions and, and, and they grow from there. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a lovely word. Guys, again, we're, we're, uh, we have an, uh, our next session today is, is uh, the, about uh, with a Russian, a professor, now we're going to talk about groundwater in Russian, not in Russia. But wow, how, wow, how, that's, cha that's challenging. <laughs> tell you one thing, I can sing a song in Russian. Not now, if you want to watch next, you have to watch the next session. <laughs> I promise, okay, I'll, I'll sing to you guys in, in Russian. Okay, so please, guys, uh, it's been a Wonderful time having you both here. Great contribution. We, we hope we work together uh, more often. You know, we keep in touch because we know you have lots to offer uh, to the Groundwater Project and as a, as a whole to the groundwater of the world. That's our main mission together. Okay. Thank you. Please, could you make a final 
a final statement for our audience? It's water is very important. Uh, I'm 70% water, and we have to w know where it comes from, where it goes to, and uh, make sure that everybody that we contact uh, understands those things. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. That's on. Perfect. Well, water is everywhere. In the internet, there is water right now. So, Everton, thank you and congratulations for you and for your team. It, it's been, it, it was a great pleasure to, to make part of this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very fun. much. It's been fun. Uh, and spread the word around, please. Tell everybody to watch this, to watch yeah. Peter C. and Edson dancing, okay? <laughs> Take <right>. care, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye.